Hi, I'm Aziz from the Enforcement and Structural Inspection Department, Building Resilience Group of BCA. My department oversees the periodic structural inspection regime for buildings and also deals with the uh, incidents to building that affect their structural stability. Okay, uh, tell us more about the Zion Road incident. So there was a vehicle collision incident at Zion Road last October. BCA was alerted by the police at around 2.30 a.m after midnight. A taxi had crashed into the concrete column of a three-storey RC building. The damage was quite bad that the police had to evacuate 17 residents in total. So while we made our way down to the incident site, we also activated our term contractor to be on standby, just in case they have to carry out structural propping if we assess that the structural integrity of the building was affected. And uh, we also activated our back-end support engineer to be on standby to provide the team on site with the relevant details about the building. What did BCA engineers do on site? So when we first reached the site, we coordinated with the police to ensure that the place is properly cordoned off and all the occupants from the affected and nearby buildings are all evacuated. Then we did a damage assessment and we found that the reinforcement bars of the first story columns had buckled, thus affecting the structural integrity of the building. We explained to the owners and occupants that we can't allow them to go back in and we need to immediately carry out the structural propping works. And after we did some site measurements and calculations, we advised our term contractors on the execution of our propping works on site. And only after the propping works were satisfactorily carried out, we allowed the occupants to go back to their unit. What will be the likely follow-ups from BCA after such incidents? So for cases such as the Zion Road and similar kind of incidents, once the propping works are completed and the occupants are allowed back into their unit, we will meet up with the owner and explain the follow-up procedures. Normally, we will issue a dangerous building order and in some cases, even a closure order. And the dangerous building order will require the building owner to appoint a professional engineer. And the appointed professional engineer will first have to assess and advise on the precautionary measures before moving on to investigate and recommend the permanent rectification works. BC engineers will be there throughout the whole process to support the owner and the professional engineer. And once after the rectification works are completed, we will then review and lift the orders. Any thoughts on what you learned from the Zion Road incident? I think over our course of work, every case presents new challenges and learning opportunities. Through managing multiple incidents, we constantly review and improve our ops procedures for greater efficiencies. Aside from that, we also ensure that there's adequate back-end support to provide information and uh, write reports so that the team that is going on site can focus 100% on the site investigation. By working closely with the owners and PE, we can ensure that the right rectification works are done and the building's integrity is being restored back to its original state. That is why at any moment, we have an engineer on standby to respond to incidents. And at BCA, our top priority is always about building safety for the people. I hope you've learned a little about what my department does to keep people safe. Bye.